For about 15 years, a seemingly trivial question has gone unanswered in the Roblox community. What is the game in this Roblox blooper from 2007? Seriously. It's often dubbed Train 2 by the community, but there's no proof behind this being the proper name of it, and it's completely unknown who created it. No web archives show anything related, nobody involved in the original video seems to remember, and there's no proof of a game called Train 2 or anything similar ever being on the front page for more than a day. It's not lost necessarily, as it's in many packs of old Roblox maps, and it's even bundled with the launcher Novitus, which I used for playing early versions of Roblox. It was most likely at the bottom of the front page once on a day in 2007 when the page was an archive, and it was replaced by a new game soon after. In the last 10 years, online discussions surrounding inaccessible, broken, deleted, forgotten, or otherwise lost forms of media has had an uprising. While niche, lost media from the early history of Roblox is a topic that I find captivating. On a platform fueled by user-generated content for nearly two decades, it's inevitable that bits and pieces will disappear. Additionally, the topic of lost Roblox media extends beyond games. It covers videos, screenshots, old versions of the game, form posts, physical merchandise, models, audio, entire accounts, and even clothing. Today, we're taking a deep dive into the Roblox Lost Media Rabbit Hole. First, I want to talk about lost versions of Roblox, or clients as I like to refer to them. The actual executables for individual Roblox updates. This is the most well-known form of Roblox lost media. Roblox was worked on and even public at some points during 2004 and 2005, though despite years of searching, no clients from this era have been discovered. In early 2006, David Bazuki started posting update logs on the Roblox forums, including version numbers. This is when we start to get a good idea of what was being added in each update. Somehow captured by web crawlers on the Wayback Machine, installer files for versions from January 2007 and April 2007 were archived on a Roblox testing page called dev.roblox.com. These installers don't work, however, as they need a cab file to function. In 2017, the client search team was created and their Discord server was made shortly after. That same year, a user who played Roblox in 2007 provided the client search team with versions of Roblox from late 2007, dating back to August of that year. Up until 2021, these were the oldest versions of Roblox available to the public. On the 14th of March 2021, the client search administrators announced that they had just unearthed a version of Roblox from March 27th, 2007. This was version 0.3.368.0. An anonymous player from that time had it lying around on an old hard drive. To this day, this is the earliest version of Roblox that we can still play. This client is so old that it predates click to move, spawn locations, hats, and the release of Robux and Ticks. This this update added the chat filter, time of day setting, and the ability to import custom skyboxes into games. Despite this revolutionary discovery, clients from shortly after this are lost to time. There are even a couple lost versions from 2008 and as late as February 2009. On the 11th of November 2023, Modnark announced that the client search team were inches away from finding an August 2006 client. They recently contacted a player who joined in early August 2006 and wasn't very active. Sadly, he reinstalled Roblox in January 2008, overwriting almost the entirety of the 2006 client. New discoveries were made here, however. For instance, we have a few cached remnants of the installer for a mid-2006 client dated the 13th of August. It should also be noted that because Roblox has always been a predominantly Windows-based game, archives for Mac-based clients of Roblox are lacking, and the vast majority of Mac clients from 2011 and 2012 are completely lost. For this chapter, I want to focus on prolific Roblox developers with a long history of game development and tons of lost projects that come with it. Stickmaster Luke has been making Roblox games non-stop for over 16 years. He's most known for the game Natural Disaster Survival released in late 2011. A ton of his games, especially the ones from 2008 and 2009, have gone missing over the years, leaving only footage and screenshots of gameplay behind. Instagib Fight in the Fog is an FPS game released at the tail end of 2008. For reference, 
happens to give is a term used in old school deathmatch games that refers to shots from any distance that insta kill the player. Nowadays, there are no full copies of the game in circulation, and the game was closed towards the end of 2014. In 2010, a known exploiter named Proxy Worm uploaded a stolen direct copy of the game to his account. Sadly, the game was broken as a side effect of the filtering enabled update in 2018, rendering it mostly useless in terms of playing the game. But through this, we know the map for the game still exists. Stickmaster Luke published the fog script the game uses as a free model, so we have that too. Additionally, another user with a stolen copy reposted the original gun used in the game as a free model. The game, theoretically, is mostly found. An original copy is yet to surface, however. In May 2008, shortly before Instagib Fight in the Fog was created, Stickmaster Luke had a relatively popular FPS game open on his account for a few months called Covert Ops Shade of Night Sniper Fight. There's no footage of it and all that exists is two screenshots that were used as thumbnails for the game. Shortly after I wrote that, I stopped researching Stickmaster Luke's old games because there were too many for me to count, or include in this video. The RBXL studio files for at least 50 of them are in circulation, including the majority of his most popular games, but around 70 to 100 games from just the years 2007 to 2010 alone are lost and entirely unplayable in any form. Pyro was once a well-respected developer who joined Roblox in 2006. He was most popular around 2008 to 2009 mostly for his FPS games. All of his games are lost now and completely unplayable for reasons I'll get to in a minute. His first significant game was Gorge Battle, a team-based FPS game made in September of 2008. It's an impressive game for the time it was created, most notably for its custom character rigs, albeit primitive. The game was closed in November and replaced by a different game called Zombie War. Pyro also made an FPS game in collaboration with Stickmaster Luke called Initiative Combat in April 2009, not to be confused with the badge or the game named after the badge. It was released on a shared account called Shipment. Much like Gorge Battle, it was rather impressive for the era of its creation. In February 2010, it was closed for construction and it has never been opened up since. In April of that same year, Stickmaster Luke reopened a version of it on his profile, which is still available though the weapons are broken nowadays, so at least a broken copy is in circulation I guess. Apparently in 2014, Stickmaster Luke started working on a possible sequel or remake of sorts called Combat Initiative, though it's entirely broken, and it's unclear if any notable progress was ever made on it. Pyro's Hangout, also from 2009, is a lost, forgotten social hangout game created by none other than Pyro. In comparison to games like JJ5X5's House, which had a nearly identical game concept, Pyro's Hangout had weirdly detailed building and scripting for such a simple game from so long ago. Apparently it was closed down because the creator didn't like the online daters that hung out there, which is kind of funny. Out of nowhere in early 2013, Pyro quit Roblox and made all of his games private. He did note in his bio that most of his models and games were broken some time before by an update. Matty Green Bay, who I'll refer to as Matt, is one of Roblox's earliest users, joining in July of 2006 before Roblox was officially released. Matt is most known for being mentioned in the first post on the Roblox blog made in December of 2006. This was because of a game he made titled Rebel Wars, which the admins particularly liked. It was described as a fun team battle map. This is all that remains of the game, as it was replaced by a blank slot in May of 2007. As well, it's confirmed that even before Rebel Wars, Matt had a maze game of sorts on his profile. It's unknown what the name of it was, but Builderman can be seen in early form post archives complimenting Matt on the game, and below it you can see the very first Roblox scammer I guess. Matt uploaded what I assume to be parts of the game on the catalog on the same day the game was made, so it's not 100% lost. On the 11th of February 2011, Bright Eyes made a post on the Roblox blog about a special event going on, based on the Transformers Prime show on air at the time. By playing one of 10 survival games on an account called Transformers Event, you could find coins for one of two teams, and collecting 5 of these coins for either team would get you a special hat for the respective team, the Autobot or Decepticon caps. The event ended 2 weeks later and all the involved games were shut down. In all my time doing Roblox related videos, I would never heard of this event event, at least until this month. Little to nobody cared about it when it came out and there's only 5 existing videos about the event, with 4 of them giving out spots for the coins. One video shows off the prizes and games involved in the event, with the creator even mentioning they made it because they wanted to show off the hats, not out of interest in the event. All 10 games used for the event are lost media. They only had about 30 to 60,000 visits each, and were mainly modified versions of pre-existing Roblox games with coins inside of them. When Clockwork started his second 
second summer internship in May 2008, he made tons of games in rapid succession which only lasted a couple weeks or even days each. Some examples include a game called Iron Man Missiles, an aerial based fighting game with helicopters, this sword monument, an obstacle course on the side of a mountain that was uploaded as a teaser for the upcoming golden teapot hat, a game where you upgrade your weapons while fighting rainbow colored ducks, a parody of low quality survival games on the front page at the time called Can You Escape Death, and much more. All of these games are now lost, only leaving behind a few public assets and a select few scattered pieces of gameplay footage. This chapter is a sort of add-on to a video I made in the summer of 2022 about a now-defunct video sharing website that Google used to own, and how many Roblox videos from 2006 to 2008 are now lost media because of the website shutting down in 2011. If I haven't made it apparent already, videos and screenshots from Roblox's earliest days are very limited, especially 2006. We only have 10 videos recorded in 2006, with most of them being released by Shedletsky or uploaded to Google Video in the middle of November 2006. Footage from early 2007 is just as scarce. As of May 2007, according to an old forum post, over 70 results for Roblox came up when searching the term on Google Video. We only have, a. Uh six of those. <laughs> it was while I was editing this that I realized he's probably talking about Google Video search and not searching on Google Video, which is confusing, yeah. Which would instead mean instead of six of those, we have 21 of those. That's still not 70. Nintendo Boy, also known as Nintendo 250, was one of the earliest Roblox YouTubers ever. He joined in January 2007 and started making bloopers on Roblox within the next month. He even inspired Flesk Jurta's Roblox series, which was massively influential at the time. Unfortunately, in 2009, his original channel was terminated for violating the copyright guidelines on YouTube, and his early Roblox content went with it. He once had tons of forum posts on Roblox promoting his videos, though they've all been content deleted, somewhat in part to the excessive swearing in his videos. Only one of his videos, Roblox TV from March 20th, 2007, has been found in full. Upon creating a new account, Nintendo Boy re-uploaded 10 of his old Roblox videos, though all of them were from late 2000s. 2008 or 2009. None of his 2007 content was re-uploaded. One broken archive on the Wayback Machine of a Nintendo 250 video from April 2007 shows just how many early Roblox videos are deleted now. The recommended shows 20 different Roblox related videos, all uploaded before August 2007, and only 7 of the 20 videos still exist. Flesk Jurta also had tons of Roblox videos recorded in 2007 and 2008 which are missing from YouTube. Shortly after he was banned from Roblox in October 2008, the majority of his Roblox videos disappeared from his channel, including scattered episodes of different Roblox bloopers series on his channel. For example, Roblox bloopers 2 was missing until 2021, though Roblox bloopers 1 and 3 stayed put on his channel. The 2007 Halloween special had 3 parts in total, though only the first part still exists. There was an entire series of shortened bloopers called Bloopers Shorties, which is also completely missing, with only the thumbnails of some episodes being preserved. This also goes for a two-part series of videos about Roblox glitches, a short-lived series called Roblox Explorer, another series of Roblox tutorials, another series called Roblox Battle, and more. Sadly, as far as I know, Flesk Jurta doesn't have any of these videos lying around, though he did repost the missing pieces of the Flesk Jurta as Homer Simpson series on his channel a few years back. Since I started working on this video in early December, I've gone even farther down the rabbit hole of lost Roblox content on YouTube, made from 2006 to 2008. Almost every Roblox YouTuber or developer that had videos up in that era has lost content to some degree. In 2007, Stealth Pilot had a few Roblox videos up on a now deleted channel called I'm One Stealth Pilot, such as The Domino Effect, an entry for the Domino Rally Building Contest. Besides his music uploads, such as the song he made for for the iconic shirts and pants release trailer, all of the other content from his old channel is now lost. Form posts from December 2006 also show that he was working on videos before that, but they never released to my knowledge. JJ or JJ Favix5 was one of the most popular Roblox YouTubers in the late 2000s, mostly because of his bloopers series called Roblox Gone Crazy. This is also why he has his own hat in the Roblox catalog. On his channel, there used to be a second series of loose Roblox shorts running concurrently. 
Most of the videos in this series have been deleted since, mostly random clips released between July and October of 2007. The thumbnail of one, a video called Three Amazing Plane Kills, has since been recovered. A while ago, I found this old tribute video someone made for him in September 2007, made up of clips from JJ's channel. The video contains tons of random non-Roblox videos that are completely lost now, such as pivot animations and miscellaneous gameplay. Parts of one of the Roblox shorts, 321 Blast Off, recorded in July of 2007, were preserved in this video. And finally, the four moderator scripter was fired in April 2008 for uploading a YouTube video leaking the Sparkles feature before release. After he was fired, he was entirely IP banned and both the video and his entire channel are gone. And those, in my opinion, were the three pillars of the Roblox Lost Media rabbit hole. There's a lot of stuff I didn't mention here, so I may make a part two in the near future, going even more in depth. If anything mentioned here is found, it will be added to a pinned comment below, and there will be posts about it on my community tab and Twitter account. Since I started working on this video, two important games were found, Bloody Mary 2 and an original, unmodified copy of Sword Fight on the Heights 3. And from the looks of it, that won't be the last of it. Thank Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.